Now, in the past few years, we've heard a lot about long COVID, a debilitating post-viral hangover that can leave sufferers with headaches, brain fog and fatigue, amongst other symptoms. And for sufferers of another long-term condition, this will sound all too familiar. Myalgic encephalomyelitis, or chronic fatigue syndrome, has a wide range of symptoms, but the most common is extreme tiredness. It's estimated that over 250,000 people in the UK have the condition, and yet we still know very little about what causes it, or crucially, how to treat it. But a recent study by researchers from the UK, the US and South Africa could pave the way to promising new experimental therapies. Our reporter Emily Bird has been speaking to the team behind the work and she joins me now. Hello Emily, can you tell me a bit more about this research? Hi Vic, yeah, so this study is actually the first to uncover clear biomarkers for the disease. So the researchers have been studying the blood of those with ME or CFS um, and found these microclots in the blood, which could be a really exciting um, development in better understanding the condition. Okay, so uh, what is a microclot? So a microclot is essentially blood clotting in an anomalous way. So they're small and they're resistant to being broken down, which is part of the problem here. And actually, I spoke to Professor Douglas Kell from the University of Liverpool, who described to me what these strange clots look like down the microscope. So the elements of the blood clot are fibres which look in an electron microscope like a plate of spaghetti, except that in the presence of some of these other things such as a bacterial cell wall component, the clotting goes to a completely different kind of structure which in electron microscopes looks rather like uh, if you parboil spaghetti and you don't cook it properly and it all sticks together in an unholy mess. That's a lot of spaghetti references. <laughs> so are these strange clots unique to ME or chronic fatigue? No, actually, so many other conditions have these type of clots and, and it, they actually occur any time there's any sort of inflammation. So you see them in diabetes, cardiovascular disease, psoriasis even, and, and also neuroinflammatory neuroinflammatory diseases like Alzheimer's or Parkinson's yeah. um, but they hadn't yet been seen or even actually looked for in MECFS and the reason the researchers went looking was an earlier study that they found that they found these microclots in long COVID. Mm. So they actually figured out that the spike protein that causes so many problems in long COVID actually causes these microclots mm. and they then decided to look for them in MECFS and they saw that there were 10 times the concentration of these microclots in patients than compared to the control. Okay, so so what are they doing there? How did how did they get there and, and how are they affecting people's symptoms? Are they, are they causing the disease? Well, this is the thing, it's still unclear. And like you said at the beginning, there's still no consensus on exactly what causes ME or CFS. But there is a theory about it being a post-viral disease. So a dormant virus or a bacterial infection could be lying dormant in some part of the body and shedding these inflammatory factors. So similar to the spike protein, something else is in the blood that perhaps is causing these microclots. And I also spoke to Professor Rizia Pretorius at Stellenbosch University in South Africa. She worked on the study and she pointed out that there's still a lot that we don't quite know. So it is more a result of the pathology of the disease and disease-specific pathology rather than the microclots appearing and then being the cause of the disease. But definitely the microclots in circulation is not supposed to be there and it can cause further clotting dilemmas in the patient suffering from the microclots. So it's not directly the cause of the disease to start off with, but it definitely can perpetuate the uh, vascular damage that we see in these patients. Okay, so it's, it's unclear whether, they, whether they're causing people's symptoms or not, but could they be? Well, Professor Kell was a little more hopeful. He says there is a logical mechanism by which these clots could be causing the disease, so in chronic fatigue and in long COVID. Mm. So he says that if you think about a normal blood clot, that would block a big artery or a vein because they're larger and that can cause problems like stroke or deep vein thrombosis. Mm -hmm. And that's because they de deprive a big area of oxygen. But if you have these microclots, which are much smaller, they can block these smaller blood vessels, causing more local areas to be starved for, um, of oxygen, which could explain the wide variety of sy symptoms seen in chronic fatigue or in long COVID. And that precisely can explain things like fatigue and the 
overall set of enormous number of symptoms that people with ME-CFS and long COVID have. So it's all to do with oxygen not getting to the tissues and what happens depends upon the tissue. If it's to the brain, you get brain fog. If it's to the kidney, your kidneys don't work. And if it's to skeletal muscle, your muscles don't work properly and you get fatigue. Fascinating and, and still a bit mysterious, but causative or not, could these microclots be a potential target for treatment? Well, like you said, it's early days and it, it will be a long time before we, we know whether we can target them for treatment or not. But some work in COVID has already suggested that stopping these clots from forming or perhaps getting rid of them when they have formed has prevented severe forms of long or acute COVID. And there's hope for ME or CFS treatments in the future as well. It has been a significantly neglected disease because so many clinicians and researchers have driven the idea that it is a psychological disease and many of the patients have been suffering really to the extreme levels where they cannot lift their head from their their bed they lie in dark rooms without any help That's the saddest part and I hope that this renewed interest in post-viral conditions would give these patients some sort of hope that it is not all in their head. It is actually a physical disease with a physical reason and trying to get them out of bed and do exercise and think themselves better is definitely not going to work. And furthermore, I also am very excited that long COVID will, I'm sure, have the ability to place more emphasis on post-viral conditions. And I hope that we can even visit Alzheimer's and Parkinson's theories on the development of that too. Professor Rija Pretorius there from the University of Stellenbosch. And thank you to Professor Douglas Kell from the University of Liverpool as well. And of course, to our own reporter, Emily Bird.